Welcome. The breaking news today is the sun just produced an X2 flare. The peak intensity of this flare was X2.09, so technically it was a 2.1 flare. Its peak time was at 1754 UT on the 13th of March. It was from Sunspot Region 3234, which was on the northwest limb at the time. And it looks as though a coronal mass ejection was launched to the southwest. Here's the X-ray light curve showing the X2 flare plus two previous M flares. You can see that the flare has rose very, very sharply to the X level, but has been decaying away very slowly, which is a sure sign that there has been a coronal mass ejection. Well, let's find out where the flare came from. To do that, we're going to use the 1700 Angstrom Continuum movie from the Solar Dynamics Observatory AIA instrument. This shows both the sunspots and the flare locations at the same time. So it's a very useful channel. Here goes. So it looks like the flare was just from behind the large spot just going over the limb. Now actually let's take a look at the x-ray emission itself and we're going to go to the hottest channel we have available to us which is the Iron 20 131 Angstrom channel and that emits radiation at about 10 million degrees. All this is to do with the rearrangement of coronal loops and one of the best channels to see the coronal loops are uh, channel 171 angstrom which is an iron 9 channel so this is much lower temperature about 630,000 degrees kelvin uh, and we'll look at the evolution of the loops as the flare goes along note uh, when the flare goes off how the surrounding loops are hit by the shock wave. One of the important questions is, are there any objective from this event? And one of the best channels to look at that is the Helium 2304 Angstrom movie. Now that's a much cooler channel altogether at uh, 50,000 degrees Kelvin. But what we're looking for is prominence and filaments erupting away from the sun. So we saw from that last movie that there was ejector from this region and it went to the southwest. Not radially, interestingly enough. However, so now does that mean that we had a coronal mass ejection? Well, one of the ways of looking at that is use a coronagraph and there is a coronagraph that's operational on the SOHO spacecraft, the LASCO instrument C2. So we'll take a look at that movie right now and see whether there was a coronal mass ejection. There seems to have been a coronal mass ejection, so that's possibly heading for Earth. But there has already been some effect on Earth, and that's namely that this flare gave out so much radio signal that it's caused blackouts on the surface of the Earth, mainly in South America and North America. This was classified as an R3 radio blackout, which is a very strong uh, radio blackout and causes problems with high frequency emissions and also could interfere with navigation signals. So if your GPS was giving you a problem today, then this might have been the cause. It is clear now that the sun is most active it has been for over six years. This is the third largest X-ray flare from Solar Cycle 25. It's the sixth X flare in 2023, which is quite remarkable. It's the 15th overall X flare during Solar Cycle 25. And Solar Cycle 24 by this stage had only produced nine. 
It was near the west limb of the sun, so it could affect the Earth. And there were radio blackouts, but we saw no protons, so it wasn't a very energetic event. So that's it for this quick update on the X flare. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay safe and goodbye.